Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. For those of you who are just tuning in and or are new to the channel, I go by JT Bear on these parts and this particular video we're going to be taking a look at the Ryobi 40 volt 14 inch brushless chainsaw that they sent me to kind of do a review on. Now I'd like to start with the disclaimer, yes they sent me this saw for free. That said, I do not consider this a sponsored video as they did not give me a sum of cash to have a particular opinion on it and uh, well the opinion that follows is my own after some rather extensive testing. Now if you are, as I said earlier, new to the channel, you can go back through my videos and you can see that I used this thing in minus 30 and I've used it in regular normal temperatures. I have put it through quite the test, attempting to uh, make split logs, try and do timber, lumber, things like that. And you know what, this saw is still working. So let's take a look at it in the box, out of the box and uh, working. And then we'll talk about, you know, what I think. All right, here we go. So here is the actual saw we are testing, 40 volt lithium brushless, 14 inch cordless chainsaw, gas like power it claims, but we'll talk about that in a second. Automatically adjusts power for optimal performance. We'll talk about that in a second too. Side access, easy tensioning. This particular set comes with the charger and the battery and a five year warranty. Now, uh, let's talk about that really quickly always good to get things with a warranty and when it comes to buying these uh, cordless products whether it be from Ryobi or any other company I strongly recommend paying the little bit extra to get the ones that include a charger and a battery because it seems like with most of these products buying a battery and charger separately costs almost as much as buying a tool that includes them so number one recommendation from Mr. Bear right there if you're gonna buy one buy one with the charger and the battery. Here is the battery that came with this particular saw. I also have two other 40 volt batteries because I had the chainsaw or the, um, the lawnmower as well. Just push the button on the back it tells you what your level of charge is at. Very handy. Here's the charger that comes with it. You want to make sure this one is clicked solidly into place. I actually, um, now that I've had it for a while, I prefer the charger that came with the lawnmower. I find it's a little bit faster and it seems to be a little bit more consistent as far as accepting the batteries to charge them. Get in there. But with this one, you've got to get that first click and then there's a definite solid second click. If this were plugged in, you'd see the, the flashing green light letting you know it was working. They have all the, you know, pictographs on the side to let you know what's going on with the thing. And ultimately, both the chargers are pretty decent. I just, because I have two different types of them, I have a preference is all. But this one does work quite well. Now here we have the chainsaw that comes with this package. As you can see, this one has been thoroughly tested. I like the little sheath that comes for the chain protection. Very nice. Slides on and off quite easily. Does fall off if you're being careless wandering around with the thing, but just keep your tip up and it'll stay on there. Nice easy fill for the bar oil. You can kind of see through it to see what your level is. And uh, it doesn't use it too terribly fast, but if you're going to be doing long-term cutting projects with this, I do recommend keeping an eye on that. On this particular version of the chainsaw, I know there's another version where the battery goes in kind of this way. This one drops straight in, makes it nice and easy to see what your battery charge levels are at. Just push the button, you're good to go. It's not showing up well with the glare and the light out here, but very straightforward. This is designed to accept larger style batteries as well, which are the ones that came with the lawnmower. That's why you'll see this gap here, but it doesn't really make a difference. The batteries both styles seem to last about the same amount of time. Now, let's talk about a couple of things. On the box here it says gas-like power. I think anyone who has used an electric tool knows off the hop that that's probably not going to be entirely the case. This is a very good little chainsaw, but it does not compare to the deep torque that you're going to get out of a traditional gas chainsaw. So if you're looking for something industrial, this might not be a good choice for you. If you are like myself and you're a homesteader, you're just looking to do, you know, some occasional limbing and such around the property, then this, this does make an excellent choice. Let's take a look at some of the trees that I've brought down with this saw and, um, well, you can just make your own decision as we go. 
One thing that is worth mentioning is this does not even include a little tiny bottle of chainsaw oil, like uh, bar oil. So because you do need that in any chainsaw, if you're going to buy one of these, make sure you get some bar oil before you leave the store while you're buying the saw. I had to go back for mine, but um, that's a long story, a long story. The point is, don't forget to buy your, your chain oil. So scattered around the fire pit here, you can easily see the remains of um, a lot of what I've been doing with this saw. Pretty decent sized stumps there, but nothing really uh, noteworthy. Let's take a look at the base of the largest tree I've taken down with this sucker though and uh, compare it to the length of the 14 inch blade. So here we have the largest tree that I brought down as my hand for a size comparison. It's pretty good size on this thing. And uh, I had to get a little creative, I'll be honest. But, you know, when you look at that, blade doesn't actually technically reach all the way across. So clearly creativity is gonna be required. And yet, it brought it down. I've got two very large chunks of log here. I haven't bucked these up any smaller because I'm thinking about uh, using them for a garden idea. That doesn't relate to this particular video though. What does is that this tree here needs to come down because it's interfering with my garden light. So today we'll take care of that and uh, chat a little bit more about what I think of this here saw. All right, so as I start this clip, I'm gonna leave it running at the regular sound but I will turn the volume down a little bit, A, because the dog is whining in the background, and B, because the drone of a chainsaw can get a little wearing. However, that dog, however, I am gonna leave it running at real time so you can see how well this saw does with the tree that's just behind me here. So, without too much further ado or whining from the dog, let's get started on that. Should mention one of my favorite things about this chainsaw is it starts with as easy as a thumb, No painful ripcord, no smell of gas. Still one of my favorite things about this saw. The problem with this cut is the large stump back here, so it makes it a little bit awkward for me. Bear with me, my style is less than perfect. And she's down. Came this close to taking out my camera. That was potentially not good. We're here to talk about the chainsaw though, not my skills with it. Carrying on. Having crushed that piece of decorative fence, I'm guessing I'll have some explaining to do when shocks get home. So still on the first battery here, we're gonna clean this up a little bit. The neighbors just, uh, you know, I've expressed that they don't care that much, but I like to keep my yard clean, so yes. So 
So I think by this point I've clearly demonstrated it's lightweight, it's easy to use, it's fairly effective. I'm going to use up the rest of this battery taking the limbs off the tree and then I'll show you just how far we got on one battery, one charge. I guess history will find it somewhat ironic that I only got a few more branches done before the battery died. But that said, let's bear in mind, this is a battery operated chainsaw. So to have even brought down the tree, which is the one I'm, I'm kind of impressed by. There's a very thick stump, you know, maybe 10 to 12 inches across, I'd say. So that is not bad, but this is why I say it doesn't necessarily have the gas-like power that is advertised because a gas saw probably would have been able to eat through the base of that a lot better. Now bear in mind, I did start this with, this is not an industrial tool. So sure, that battery may run out kind of quick, but refueling the saw is as simple as clicking in another battery um, and you don't have to worry about mixing anything or pouring gas and accidentally getting on your jeans or well, any of that stupid stuff that you would normally have to with a quote unquote proper chainsaw. So with this new battery in here, I'm gonna go back at limb in this and we'll cut back in a second. So at this point, we have retired the second battery. It is sitting there without any fuel source in it at all. And let's take a look at what's left of this tree. I got almost all of the branches off going up, except for the ones that were underneath and kind of, uh, well, providing support. And I was able to buck up most of the top section. So this is all basically ready to move and sort. Not bad for two batteries. Now, if I was thinking ahead, I would have thrown that first battery on the charger, and I am about to go do that. But it probably won't be charged by the time I've finished off the third battery. I doubt we'll actually get this tree completely dealt with today. But, let's talk about, well, the pros and cons of this little saw for jobs just like this. Honestly, I think the cons are very straightforward. Um, anybody who is used to using a gas chainsaw will be expecting that torque that goes along with it. And obviously, because this is powered by a battery, it's simply not there. A gas chainsaw probably would have been able to eat through the trunk of that tree a little bit faster than this one did. And, um, well, you just stop, fill it up, stop, fill it up, stop, fill it up, and it's a little easier to carry on. But that said, I can't stand mixing gas and oil for these machines. I, I can't, I, it drives me nuts, I hate doing it. I do not enjoy being inches away from an exhaust muffler and having all of those fumes spewing into my face while I'm trying to do a little yard work. I don't like it with the lawnmower. I don't like it with chainsaws. I don't like it with any of my yard tools. And using these Ryobi tools, battery powered though they may be, absolutely eliminates the smell of gasoline and the smell of exhaust. So here we are with the third battery finished off. I have marked most of my cuts all the way up this log, got rid of all the branches that were on it. So now I just need to roll it over. I can finish those puppies off probably in one, maybe two more batteries. But as I mentioned earlier, I neglected to start charging these today. So the project's pretty much gonna have to stop here. But for a battery operated chainsaw, I think that's a pretty good pile of rubble. So the question that leaves is, is that pile of rubble worth it for the cost of this particular saw? Now, really, there are two ways to look at that. If you need, well, an industrial type saw, you know, like you're a logger, you're working for Mac Blow, you've got to bring down a whole forest. You know, if you're uh, maybe one of those guys who collects firewood and you're bucking up several fat trees every day, this is probably not the chainsaw for you, I'm going to be honest. Go out and look at a 20 inch still or a husky, you'll probably be much happier with that. Now that said, if you're like myself and you're a homesteader who needs to do some occasional limbing, bring down the occasional tree, you know, nothing, nothing as big as these guys here, I will use this saw to continue bringing these down, but it's not what it was designed for. This is, it's a fantastic saw for the average homeowner. If you just need to trim up your apple tree or you know take a few limbs some of the lower limbs off of a couple of spruce trees or whatever this is a fantastic saw one battery can actually do a lot three batteries can do 
a truly amazing amount. The only um, real negatives that I have seen with this saw so far is it collects an awful lot of filth and sawdust inside it where the chain is going around and occasionally that makes it somewhat tricky to start. There's an easy workaround there, you just slide the bar up and down a little bit or the chain up and down the bar a little bit. It's going to knock some of that sawdust out and or you know, long term if it's really giving you grief that way, take a twig, knock your sawdust out that way and it'll work just fine. It's an incredibly durable little saw. Um, bar oil, probably the biggest issue with this. I have yet to encounter a chainsaw where, you know, bar oil doesn't leak out of it, so you can't really um, say that this chainsaw is any better or worse than others for that. Uh, it's just, it's an issue with the saw. If you have a good collection of batteries, you can basically keep yourself going. As I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, I do recommend buying any battery operated tool buy the version of it that comes with the charger and with the battery even if you already have a battery and charger for the same type of tools it never hurts to have those backups and spares uh, on a scale of 1 to 10 I'd probably give this chainsaw an 8 I am uh, perfectly happy with it and I don't need a 10 of a chainsaw uh, you know there are a couple of these trees that are going to be really big and are going to take a long time for me to work through it if it's too long I'll just call a friend that's got a gas chainsaw I really don't see a need for me to have the flammable liquids in the home. I don't see a need for me to smell that when I have to refuel the saw. I don't see a need for me to smell the exhaust when I'm actively using the saw. And uh, the avoidance of those things, I think, very much makes it worth it to me as a small homeowner. Uh, if I had a, an arborist company, you know, if I was trimming trees every day, all day, I would probably not choose this particular same chainsaw. They do have a slightly larger version that I might look into for that, but ultimately this would not be my number one choice. That said, it is my number one choice for little trees, rural setting, homesteaders, just, you know, the average chainsaw user would be, would be just fine with this one. So I hope you've enjoyed this look at what uh, the saw is capable of, and uh, you know, hopefully it's not too boring of a video. For those of you who regularly watch my channel, I'll be back tomorrow with some regular pepper and tomato and garden type updates. And for those of you who are new and just kind of stumbled on my channel because you saw the chainsaw thing, well, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sticking around and uh, I hope this helps you make your decision one way or the other as to whether or not you are interested in picking up one of these Ryobi 40 inch or uh, 40 volt 14 inch chainsaws. Thank you everybody and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.